About 148 countries have signed and ratified the Paris Climate Agreement, and the UAE was the first to make its mark. Last year, Dubai was on the front cover of the National Geographic, and no, not for good reasons. With the UAE ranking 7th among the highest carbon dioxide emissions per annum per capita, Dubai's vision to have the least carbon footprint by 2050 gave it the title of the world's most improbable green city by the magazine. In 1990, the UAE emitted 32.6 tonnes of carbon dioxide per person per year. In 2010, the figure dropped to 21.9 tonnes. But despite the implemented policies, the UAE's greenhouse emission projections saw a 45% to 57% increase above 2010 levels, which are way above the carbon cap set by the EU. We don't have time. You know, by, by 2030, we need to have cut emissions by 45-50%. The time for debate and discussion um, really isn't there. The time for action is there, and you know I would um, applaud any you know first movers that take a risk um, and try you know these these initiatives, whether it's carbon capture and storage, whether it's um, initiatives around net zero buildings, whether it's you know mass deployment of renewables. Someone has to be the first to do it. A quick glance at the official report from Diva shows that only four percent of all energy was produced from renewables in 2017. Looking at Abu Dhabi, the amount of electricity produced from renewables was less than 1%. To address the issue, the government is taking initiatives. For instance, the UAE launched Clean Energy Strategy 2050, which aims to produce 7% of all energy from renewables by 2021, 25% from 2030 and 75% by 2050. Moreover, in a recent move, Diva announced that it will sell consumer goods firm Unilever nearly 21,000 international renewable energy certificates. But it doesn't end there. The Dubai government has launched the world's largest on-site solar park, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, with an investment of 50 billion US dollars that aims to generate 5,000 megawatts of energy by 2030. And if you look at the commercial and residential buildings, there are new green regulations for sustainable design. Let's hear what Mr. Saeed Al Abbar has to say on this. Um, well, I think every the, the whole country is unified under the UAE strategy. So you have obviously the UAE Vision 2021, um, for which you know sustainable infrastructure and buildings is, is a key part of that. So that captures all of the Emirates. In all of the other Emirates, there are a number of initiatives. You know that Russell Khaimah has a very comprehensive um, energy framework. They've created you know um, green building codes. They've created frameworks for. Uh, energy retrofits and renewables, so there's a number of initiatives there. Likewise in Ajman, there's um, work being done on building codes there. So against the sort of national framework and strategy, um, all Emirates are you know, active and what's pleasing to see as well is the knowledge share and transfer that you see between um, all the different Emirates of, of what's, what's taking place. Um, so we're able to sort of collectively as a country move forward quicker. But there is another antagonist in the story. Road transport accounts for a quarter of all your carbon footprint in Dubai. With the city having the highest number of cars per capita and only 14% of the population using the public transport, can it really make the carbon footprints disappear? Seems like a long shot. Take electric and hybrid vehicles for instance. If you do the math right, there are over 3.4 million cars registered, but only 4,000 are hybrid, of which a mere 1,000 are fully electric. More than 99% of all the cars run on petrol and diesel. Diva has also doubled the number of charging points in the city with 200 charging stations for about 4,000 cars. And the government refuses to become complacent. RTA just added 200 new Tesla electric cars this year and plans to have half of its taxis to be electric or hybrid by 2021. But the only buyer of these cars is still the government. Even though early adopters have many incentives from free green parking to no vehicle registration and free charging. But if residents don't make the move, they may have to actually pay a huge price. For more regular updates, subscribe to Raven Business and do not forget to like, share, comment.